There's this sort of um, false narrative going on that this is an emergency relief bill. We've had a lot of emergency relief bills already. We had a massive one, uh, about $900 billion worth in December. That was a bipartisan relief bill. This one is very much not. It seems more likely that the Democrats want something that Biden can sign. There's a lot of money that has not been spent or dispersed. Now it's hard to get exact numbers because the administration will not give it to us. It's either because they refuse to or because they simply don't know. So how can you justify spending $1.9 trillion when you're not even sure what you've already spent? What the Biden team would say in response to that is, we don't have months to go find out where every nickel went. It's a crisis and we learn from the economic crisis that waiting too long and doing too little is a bigger problem than doing too much too fast. Yeah. Well, and in his words exactly were, well, what would you take out? Yeah. And we have like a long list of things, in fact, you know, unnecessary money for state and local governments that already have it. And the formula for that uh, overwhelmingly benefits uh, blue states. I just imagine that. Or states especially that, that implemented lockdowns, especially hard. It may have been states that did, suffered the worst, didn't it? Well, everybody suffered the worst, if you're talking about just COVID. Um, now, now there's, now there's self-imposed suffering as well, which is in the form of lockdowns. And here's another problem. If you're going to give additional money to the schools, you have to at least say, hey, look, have a reopening plan. Give Americans some light at the end of the tunnel. And don't talk to me about closing schools and how that's, that's better for our kids or our teachers. That has been completely debunked by the science. The party of science needs to actually listen to science. But you know, there's a perception out there that this is a good thing. I mean, the American public supports it by 75%, Republicans by 60%. So how are you gonna deal with that politically? I'm not that worried about this one. This one is extremely bloated. Look, I, I explain hard votes all the time, and, and I'm gonna explain this one. You don't think it'll be hard to defend your vote against it? No, 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 I don't. We have to at least, at least pretend like one of our jobs is good governance and, and not saddling our children with, with really unsustainable amounts of debt. Well, debt is something that the Donald Trump didn't seem to care much about. No, he didn't. I, I, yeah, that's true. Because, because if you, it's a problem. So CPAC is this weekend. Mm -hmm. You had the number one and number three leadership of your party publicly disagree about the role of the former president of the United States. Do you believe that President Trump should be speaking at CPAC this weekend? Yes, he should. Congresswoman Cheney? I don't believe that he should be playing a role in the future of the party or the country. On that high note, thank you all very much. Isn't that problematic for the party? Yeah, it's not ideal. <laughs> I mean, there are Republicans who, i stick myself in that bucket to just say, I'd like to see a vibrant, healthy Republican party. I think if Donald Trump is part of that equation in the future, it's problematic yeah. for a lot of people. I mean, you know, the, the fundamental answer of like, who's going to lead the party? Um, we don't have to answer it like right away. So just chill out. <laughs> like, that's kind of my message to, to both extremes of this, um, who keep saying, no, bring him back in, we need him. And those, to, and those who are saying, keep him away. Like, no, no, you know, just like, why don't you focus on who you are? Well, let's just do that and I think we'll be okay.